You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Board of Selectmen's meeting uh, for January 4th, 2023 to order. Just remind everybody this is a uh, Zoom meeting. If you'd like to speak, when you speak, just state your name. And if you want to be recognized, use the raise your hand function. All right, item one, uh, to consider and if appropriate approval request from Laura Bourbon, director of Daniel Cosgrove Animal Shelter to waive the bid for the purchase of a 2023 Kia Nero electric vehicle and award the contract to Premier Kia of Brantford in the amount of 42,487. Yeah. So thank you for um, letting me come and speak today. We, um, we've we been working with Bob Alvine from Premier Subaru and Kia for a few years talking about um, the needs of the shelter. And um, in discussions with him, he talked about donating a vehicle to us, which was very generous of him. We also talked about, you know, what we want to do moving forward. And um, we are going to have an EV charger at the new building. So we wanted to get an electric vehicle as part of our fleet as well. So um, in doing so, we worked with Sustainable CT to obtain a grant, um, a matching grant, where if we raised $15,000, they would match us with $15,000. And um, we were successful in that. And the Kia Nero is currently a vehicle that's being utilized by the police department and they have um, really liked it. So um, when I spoke to Bob about it, he said that he would uh, match the price that he sold them the vehicle for. And um, it would be a year newer that we would get. So that's why I'm here asking the bid to be waived. And just to clarify, I believe the uh, police department went out to bid to, for the purchase of that vehicle uh, that they purchased last year. Um, so this is holding the same price. We went out through a competitive process a year ago. He's providing a, a year new a vehicle that's a, you know matching the uh, it's a year newer uh, at the same amount. Correct. Yes. All right. All right. I'll move it. All right. It's moved by Selectman Dunbar. I'll second it. Uh, selecting uh, Cosgrove. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, passes unanimous. Uh, so I, just for the record, uh, Selectman uh, Higgins was unable to attend uh, the special meeting. So the Chuck Tan chamber. All right, um, item two to accept a donation of a 2021 Subaru Ascent from Premier Subaru of Brantford for the Daniel Cosgrove Animal Shelter. Laura? Yeah, so once again, after talking to Bob and talking about the types of vehicles that are available, um, we, we actually really wanted this vehicle because it's an eight-seater as opposed to the seven-seater that they're building now that are captain's chairs, and we don't want that. We want something that's going to fold down flat to be able to use um, for crates and getting animals in and out safely with um, stretchers and things like that when we pick up dogs hit by car. So this vehicle um, was sort of our ideal pick, and um, Bob is donating that to us. Um, I'll make a motion to we accept this donation. Second. It's been seconded by Selectman Dunbar. Um, just thank uh, Bob Alvine and the Premier Group for their generosity. Uh, certainly have contributed a lot of organizations uh, in this area and uh, certainly this is uh, um, truly appreciated. With that, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, pass unanimously. Thank you. Mark that off. All right, item three, to consider and if appropriate approve request from Brian Droney to waive the bid for the purchase of installation of a makeup air unit for the volunteer services center 
and award the contract to W.J. Dornfeld Company Incorporated in the amount of $21,750. I believe uh, Brian Droney is on yes. the line. Yes, I am. Hello, this is Brian Droney, lead tradesman, GGB. Yes, I'm uh, requesting you guys consider the way the requirement of advertising and bidding for a new makeup air unit at uh, 30 Harrison Avenue, the Volunteer Service Center. Um, this unit actually right now is a 1991 unit. It has been giving us a lot of problems. We've been putting some band-aids on it. And I think now it's time to uh, get a new unit. And um, I got two bids, which you probably saw on my, my paperwork. And um, the lowest bid I got was from Dornfeld at 21.7. Okay. So we actually went to bid. We're just really waving the notice. Yeah. Wait, yeah. The advertising. Right. Yes. So okay. Listen, is it pricing for a moment? But this I'll is move it. All right. Uh, did you make a motion? I made a motion to move it. Yep. All right. I'll second that. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Item passes. Uh, to consider and if appropriate to accept a donation of land as open space and conservation easement located on West Point Road and adjacent to West Point Field. We have the assistant town planner, Evan Bryan, on the line. Evan? Hey, everybody. Uh, so we have an, uh, a subdivision that was uh, approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission at 125 Thimble Island Road. Our subdivision regulations require a certain amount of land be dedicated to open space. And when they're adjacent to other open space particles, that par parcels, uh, they be joined as one piece of property. In this case, it's right next to the West Point Field Park. Um, so I believe this has to be approved for you guys as a donation and then onto the RTM to be uh, finally approved. Yes. Um, any further discussion on this? No. All right, I'll move it forward. Second. Second. Second by Selectman Dunbar. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Thank you, Evan. Nice Item nice. five, to discuss the parking regulations for Stony Creek Firehouse parking lot approved by the Board of Selectmen on November 17th, 2021. Um, as you may recall, uh, a little over a year ago, Selectman Dunbar, uh, we um, adopted a set of rules for that particular parking lot. Yep. Um, we had the signage uh, uh, put up recently, um, as well as in, you know, obviously a, a number of issues have come up since then. I think we addressed through the rules that we adopted a lot of the problems, or at least have the ability to address if they should become a problem in the future. Um, but one that is is uh, kind of, you know, in, in retrospect and looking at it is we, we adopted a rule where there's no overnight parking. Now I know there's a uh, the budding neighbor um, who, who's had some uh, concerns with the overnight parking. However, in uh, talking with other neighbors, as well as the, um, as well as the uh, uh, rep couple of representatives from Stony Creek Association, uh, Mark Richter and uh, Dan Bullard, um, I believe the, limiting of a restriction of overnight parking has in, in, uh, created a, a hardship uh, that some of the other neighbors are now feeling, whether it's uh, for their own use or have visitors who are coming, they don't have adequate parking. And I believe that section, um, and Selectman Dunbar, you probably know better living down in that area. I think uh, that street, uh, a lot of it is no parking on the street immediately by the, uh, uh, in that yes. area. There's at least no parking on one side of the street. Yeah. Um, however, I also spoke to the president of the association in reference to this, he brought it up to me and I also spoke to a couple other neighbors. Um, there, there seems to be a um, discrepancy as to whether or not that parking lot should be used for overnight parking. And, and, and I'll give you some of the things that were brought up. Um, First of all, I don't know who's going to regulate and determine, and I said this to the president of the association, who's going to regulate and determine how long a vehicle stays there? I mean, obviously, we're not going to put that on the police department, and no one else should have to do it. The, the reason that parking lot, I believe, 
was changed through the RTM to be sent to us were because of the issues of vehicles being left there, some of them in disarray for long periods of time. And if we change the rule, in my opinion, I don't know how you're gonna regulate people dumping their cars there and then just saying, well, I'm leaving it there for a few days like everybody else. Um, so, and, and I've, I've spoken to a couple of residents that, that also said, absolutely not. And one of them said it right to the, the president of the association um, when I was talking to him. I think he was a little surprised to hear that. Um, there is off street parking for most of the residents. One of the residents, I believe, um, and I haven't spoken to them and they, they have not spoken to me, um, has off street parking, just a little inconvenient to them, uh, which is the same it is for almost everyone else that lives on that street because there's very limited parking. So we all make do the best we can. I think it'll open up Pandora's box personally if we if we modify for a couple of families, I know one of the people is a renter um, and, and I can feel for them, but but there is property there that if the landlord chose to could make some arrangements if that's one of the people that's complaining. Um, I'm not for changing it. I, I, I didn't know that you were going to bring it up uh, tonight. I, I did think that some of the people were going to be here um, to discuss it, but a lot of time and effort was put into there to to clean up a situation that had been an eyesore for a very long period of time and i see it turning into that if we waver and then don't have any way to regulate it and, and honestly unless you do I, I don't know how we would put that burden on anyone to try to manage how many days somebody was there how many days they're not how many days they can stay there i, I just see it as a can of worms yeah, um, again, to, to be clear, uh, certainly wasn't looking to uh, make special accommodations for individuals. I mean, one thing we do not have in, in Brantford, we do not have resident parking. Right. Um, I think, you know, going back over the history of uh, and, and the, the number of complaints or the things that we need to address over the years was, yes, things being abandoned there, left there, being utilized as a private storage area when in fact it's not like trailers and things of that nature or, or unregistered vehicles being parked there. Um, certainly think we keep, that needs to stay uh, enforced. We, the, the rules of we can have those removed and restrict that from a, uh, continuing to happen. The overnight parking issue uh, where there is a, a, a registered vehicle that is parked overnight um, is, is I think the issue that, you know, is of concern and, and needs to be addressed. So your, your question is how is that regulated? Well, right now, it, if there's a violation uh, of the rule, uh, the call is does go to the police department and it is then, you know, requested that you know, they, the, the PD enforces the violation. Right. Now, I believe uh, um, right now, you know, they will probably issue a, a warning uh, uh, or try to, I think in the past or in recent weeks, I've tried to contact the owners of the vehicles. Um, but I'm sure you, you can appreciate that's, that can become a time consuming uh, issue for uh, to ha ask our police department to address, um, you know, and, and that's where I think, you know, when I look at other municipal lots and I put it on the agenda really for us, um, again, it wasn't meant to be a surprise and actually there wasn't, um, you know, we were putting the agenda obviously with a short week, um, yeah. limited office hours and access with one of well, no, I mean, for the Rick, I, I just didn't have a chance to talk to you. I didn't know, yeah, you know, yeah. no, how that's it went to, because like I said, they didn't come to me yet. Yeah, um, it's for us to talk about. The um, <clears throat> issue, as I said, is really dealing with the, the overnight park. Now, where I do see the other side of it, we do have other municipal lots throughout town, uh, Hillside, Montaluis, behind Main Street, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but it, throughout town, which, you know, we residents do use at times for overnight parking. They, they, they use that. Um, 
And that's where I think this issue here, where first at a request, now we have a request from uh, neighbors and the association, although it's still a t it's a town lot, to have that that one item, the overnight parking, right. reconsidered. Um, but it has to be a done a because, like you said, we're not going to be able to address everybody's concern and everybody's uh, issue and and every unique situation. Through well, I believe the association will probably be having some more dialogue after I spoke to the president. All right. Because it sounds like a lot of people weren't contacted about it and they were just trying to take care of something for a couple of people. The association's large. I'm in it. I didn't even know about it until after they had already contacted you. So, um, and, and I made that clear to him at the time. I mean, the residents that live down there should have at least a little input before the association comes before this board and, and ask for something. And that goes for Mark and Dan. Um, so in all fairness, um, I think they should get their stuff together and make sure they're committed to, to whatever decision is going to be before we should have to make one. Yeah. And, and, but I also want to be clear. I think we need to, this at the end of the day is a municipal lot. Yep. And it's, you know, uh, it's really the town's obligation and responsibility to, if we're going to set rules, to have those rules and enforce the rules that, uh, we have. So we, um, you know, to, to get in a situation where we're trying to, you know, at the end of the day, it falls on us to, to really make the decision. Um, yeah, I mean, all the input we can get will help us because, you know, the few things I laid out, we have to come up with how how that's going to be managed. And, and obviously, we're not going to be able to do that tonight. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I, I don't think we're going to change the rule tonight. Um, however, you know, I, I think until this is, there are some concerns that I have and and you know, as far as uh, I think these need to be considered, and we also need to take into real consideration uh, the burden that it creates on uh, dispatch as well as the PD. Yep. Uh, we're not going to get an issue where we're we're trying to settle uh, these you know these, you know disputes. There's as you you know <laughs> yeah. there's other things that we should be. That we need the, the, the farmer has more pressing things to, to be focus done. Focus our time, right? All right, so we'll leave it on the agenda. It sounds like you've already had some discussions with the president. I know they came out with me. With me. Um, I'll also, uh, uh, and then maybe in a future meeting, we'll uh, make some recommendations, if any, at that time. Sounds good. All right, all right. Um, Trista, I apologize. I did not see any correspondence. Did you? No, there's no correspondence. I don't have anything okay. else. Thank you. All right. Any other business? All right. I'll All make right, a everybody. motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh, aye. Bye. Right, have a good day. Thanks. Okay. Feel better. Yeah. You Take care, you. everybody. Take care. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.